Okay, you can see we've got small pocket size screwdriver, uh, connector that's from a Meyer toggle harness 15478 SP. The SP in the part number stands for sleeve pack. Um, a pair of needle nose pliers and a pair of Thomas and Betts crimpers. Um, it's a tooth crimper. I got two strip wires and a few uh, terminals here and I'm going to show you how I put these terminals on. I have a fancy crimper kit and I'd much rather do it this way. I never did it with a camera in between me and what I'm doing before so bear with me here. But you see I just got the wire laid down in the channel and now I'm going to use the needle nose pliers to fold down the front tabs first. I do one side and then the other. And once I have them folded down, I slide the wire in to make sure it's in as far as it'll go. Now I have the two back tabs which actually secure the insulation of the wire. And I do those again with the needle nose. Fold that over, fold the other one on top of it. Okay, and we have what looks like somewhat of a crimp here. Now we take the Thomas and Betts crimper and we use the tooth on the top. Give it a good squeeze. And then we go back to the one for the insulation and give it a good squeeze. And there you go. If you want it straightened out, you can just give a little squeeze with your needle nose. These seems to distort a little more, but it's a good solid crimp. Now you'll note on the back here, there's a little tooth that sticks out. You see I got the screwdriver going behind it. This is what holds it in the cavity. So if I wanted to remove one of these, we'll, we'll take note. There's two in this one. It jumps to here. I'm going to make a second one continuation. Let's see if I could say all of what I want to say and keep this short. So before the battery died, I was going to show you how to remove pins. Well, connectors. So before the battery died, I was going to show you how to remove the terminals from these uh, sockets. On the front side, all you need is your little pocket screwdriver. And you just insert it here into the cavity, press down, you feel it, you know, go down the rest of the go down the rest of the way, pull it out, and your wire will come out. All we're doing is bending down this little tab that I was showing you before. Here's here's a double. Again, inside popped it right out. So rather than take the rest of these out, as I was saying it was a double, a double, well here it is removed. This is the solenoid trigger wire. It needs to feed three different things. Up, right, left. So here's one, a double, another double, and then this is where the wire c comes in to feed these three. These connectors are a little bit bigger. Both of them are. They're the same connector than what we have. So there's uh, fit a little better when making a double crimp. Also, these are crimped by machine, not by hand. Uh, here's one I did a while back, trying to do doubles. And as you can see, it just it squeezes the insulation back out in both cases. So if you're going to do it by hand, strip a little more than you need, or should I say than you normally would, twist your wires together, grab your connector. Now, I'm of the opinion that if I double crimp the copper, that's just as good as if I crimp the copper and the insulation. So, you decide for yourself, but what I found is, if you crimp the first part like I did, and then you twist the wire and press in at the same time, that'll get it in and tight. And then I like to crimp the first one. And 
And these take, these take a little bit more work. You're going to have to work these tabs. But you'll get a solid crimp. You just have to work for it. You want to try to get it down in there as far as it'll go. Bend over your first side. Bend over the second. Give them a little squeeze together. And then your crimp. Now, it may not look like this, but it's a solid connection. Connectors, okay? See, these are all white. The pins are, the receptacles are, are angled. They're not straight on the ends. They're not square. Um, because the switches have the terminals in the same pattern that matches. Also notice, Power is bonded to this side through this jumper, or bond, whatever you want to call it. This is an angle switch. It's momentary in each direction. This is from the 70s and 80s. Um, it's a molded connector. It takes care of both. This replaces this. Now, want to get confused? There's another one of these. It's different. All the pins are the opposite. That would be a Chrysler part number. And the switches that match are also Chrysler. So you can't walk into a Meyer dealer and get a switch to replace one that came from a Chrysler many, many years ago. This is a headlight switch uh, from the 70s or 80s from Meyer. Um, even back then, assembled in Mexico. Connectors, the terminals are angled the same way. And this is just an AB switch. Either you're selecting this side or this side. So it'll be for your plow lights, vehicle lights. Now, after you pop one of these out, if you want to reinstall it, you have to stand the tab back up a little bit. So you just use a little sheetrock knife or razor, whatever you got there, and get under it and just stick it out a little bit. Pocket screwdriver fits under it. That's good. Now when you insert it into a cavity, you'll hear it click. That's it. It's in.